With the Suffusion theme, there are many options available for the layout of your website or blog. In the default sidebar layout section, you'll decide how many sidebars you want for the default setting and how they will appear on a page. This layout is assigned to every post and page of your site unless it's specifically overridden. When you create a page, you can override the default layout settings by an option on the right side that's titled Page Attributes. In the Page Attributes section, you'll see the subtitle Template. It's here that you can set an alternative layout for the page. Note that this modification of the template layout is only applicable to pages. If you want to modify the layout of specific posts, this can be done while editing the post. You will find this option in the section titled Additional Options for Suffusion. If you can't see this section, you may need to activate it. To activate it, look for the tab near the top that says Screen Options. When you click on this, it will drop down a tab and show you your screen options. You can activate the additional options for Suffusion here. While you're on this section, take a look and see if there are any other settings that you should activate. Also found in the default sidebar layout section, you'll set the page width of your website. The page width settings can be fluid width or fixed width. I prefer to use a fixed page width since the fixed page width allows me to control the layout of the site so that I generally will know what the visual experience of the site visitor will be like. With the fluid width layout, the visual presentation of your site may vary from visitor to visitor. In an earlier video, I mentioned width settings and their importance. Here is where we'll set your page width. I recommend a fixed page width between 950 and 1020 pixels. This page width will accommodate most of the common screen widths without making your visitors use a horizontal scroll bar. Suffusion comes with three preset page width options to choose from, 800 pixels, 1000 pixels, and 1200 pixels. For this site, I've chosen a custom width and filled in the box below with the page width that's desired. Below the page width settings, you'll set your sidebar width settings. The default sidebar width is 260 pixels. If you desire a different width for the sidebars, set it here. Next, in the layout section, is the No Sidebar layout. You can use the No Sidebars layout if you have a page where you don't want sidebars to show. To set up posts or pages with this layout, select the No Sidebars layout while creating or updating a page or post, just as discussed previously. The No Sidebars setting will push the main post content to the edge of the page. The next five options include the following layouts. One left sidebar, one right sidebar, one left and one right sidebar, two left sidebars, two right sidebars. You can use these layouts if you have a poster page where you want or need any one of these specific layouts. To set up poster pages with these custom layouts, select the respective sidebar layout while creating or updating a post or page, just as you did with the No Sidebar layout. With each one of these layouts, you may want to alter the main page or sidebar width, since adding or subtracting a sidebar will increase or decrease the amount of space that's available in your main post area. You may have to experiment with these page sidebar width settings to see which one looks the best. The next layout is the responsive layout. These layout settings are designed to help provide an optimal viewing experience, easy reading and navigation with a minimum of resizing, panning, and scrolling across a wide range of devices. Unlike the other layouts which must be selected for each individual post or page, if the responsive layout is enabled, it will affect your entire site. The settings for the responsive layout are numerous and mostly have to do with the visual presentation on devices with different screen widths. I personally have not used the responsive layout, and I find a fixed width layout to suit the needs of the traffic visiting my websites. However, there may be some useful applications for this type of layout if the majority of your users are accessing your website with a smartphone or with other devices with a small screen size. The front blog page view layout will allow you to modify just the home page or blog page of your site so that it can look different from the rest of your site. Also in this section, you can modify how your posts display in the list. 
You can also set the number of posts that you would like to display on the main blog page. The next five layouts affect your dynamic pages. For instance, if someone searches a keyword on your site using the search function, you can set the layout of the search results page here. If someone clicks on the specific category of your website, then they'll get a page that has all of the articles for that given category, and you can set how that page will present here. The last section here deals with how your excerpts look when they show up on any of your dynamic pages. You can control the number of words that show up in the excerpts, and you can also control a number of options for thumbnail images here. In the next video, we'll review the typography settings for the Suffusion theme.